The other animal story today uh, from Colorado, at least three wildfires have been started by electrocuted birds that land on power lines and then fall to the ground after their death. Their carcasses are sparking wildfires on the ground. That's how dry it is. I thought birds could land on wires. They all they all do. I know. Is it when they touch two, the wrong two parts? It must be. I never heard of that. Uh, according to a 2022 study, 44 wildfires have been caused across the country in the last eight years because of birds landing on wires, becoming electrocuted, and their carcasses are still sparking when they hit the ground. That is unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, because occasionally a squirrel will blow up a transformer. Yep, you hear that. I've heard of snakes getting in transformers yeah. and messing them and knocking out power. But birds are on wires all the time. Maybe it's like a 90% mm-hmm. survival rate. <laughs> or more. Maybe it's like, you 99. know, maybe it's one out of a thousand land mm-hmm. on a wire and get somehow electrocuted. Are they too close to where the coupling is? I don't know. None of us knows anything about no, electricity. No, that'd be my, that'd be my guess. <sighs> But for whatever reason, out west, California, Colorado, of course, the dry ground, and uh, they, they're they still sparking when they land on the ground and then wildfires are started. I mean, mm. what can you do? What in the world? You're, you're doomed. You can't bear all the power lines out there. No, there's nothing. And you can't get birds not to land on power lines. Is there anything, if you're in a particularly dry area, could you put up, you know how you put like those decoy snakes or uh, a fake owl, fake owl on the near the power lines. Maybe Jacob, you're talking about birds on power lines. Go ahead. Yeah, I see it pretty regular. Um, a lot of times the birds will get on the power line. They can sit on the power line. That's no problem. But when they get over to a transformer where the wire connects to the transformer, mm-hmm. if they sit just right, they'll short it out and it will kill them. No. How kidding. about that? Well, that was Chris Tim's prediction. Complete the circuit. All right. Do you work in that field? I do, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, how often would you say you see something like that? Oh, it happens very regular. Man. Well, there, there it is. And so, forty-four wildfires started, and there's, I guess, there's nothing really that can be done, is there? Well, they make certain things you can try to do, but it's, uh, it's impossible to stop it. That's what I figured. Good Thanks, Jacob. Out there, man. Now, that's good information. Appreciate Flaming it. Birds. Jacob. Thank you. Manford Five Thousand knows something about this as well. Manford Five Thousand, go ahead. Well, yes. Good morning. I'm putting on my professional professor glasses as I speak. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, it's all contributed sometimes to wingspan mm-hmm. because when they come in for a landing, it kind of like Chris Dem, or sorry, I don't know. I've been gone for so long. Like Dem said, you touch the two long wires with their wingspan, zap, it done. And that's it. And so they, the larger the bird, the more likely. Yeah, and then they're falling and they're still smoldering. Yeah, and flammable, and the ground catches on fire. Crazy. Right. Never even mm-hmm. never even considered it. So I bet like your vultures? Sure. Condor. But, I mean, you know, if you're a larger bird, you may not even, I don't know how self-aware birds are, mm. but if you're a large bird, you may not think, you may think to yourself, I can't land on that. That yeah. wire's too thin. Yeah, it's, probably, yeah. it's like Biggie with the uh, the office chairs. It's very yeah, possible. Yeah, I can't. Birds Biggie don't has think special like chairs. That. I can't do that. I'm not no. sitting in this. <laughs> I don't think birds are smart enough to know that. Do they have the awareness is the question, yeah. Mm. I don't know that they, I don't either. Uh, I know that if my wife hears this, she is upset for the birds. Will she climb the power poles near your house? It's possible. Remember when... And, uh, and wait to shoo away the birds? When uh, Sully saved that plane after the bird strike, my wife's take was nobody grieves for these birds <laughs> will no one speak for the dead birds <laughs> suck through the engine there's like 80 of them huh. <laughs> and she said no one speaks for the bird <laughs> dan you're talking about birds on wires go ahead uh yeah my dad worked with the power company and he used to tell us that a lot of times the weight of the birds would push the wire down close enough or right on top of another wire and that caused it to cross it and electrocute them. Okay. Oh, well, that makes, wait. that makes perfect sense. Do you think, I, I don't know if you have any expertise on this, Dan, a bird has enough awareness to know I'm too heavy for that wire? I doubt it. I doubt it. They're bird brains. Well, they call them that for a reason, don't they? <laughs> but, but, like, if you go to the beach, <laughs> you know, you, pelicans Dad. land on pier pilings. They don't land on the mm. smaller things because they're, they're heavier they're birds. They're heavy birds. Maybe they do. I don't I, know. I find the pelican, that's my favorite bird. Because it... He love- eats an entire meal without chewing. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It just scoops. And you know my just scoops and swallows. And when I you know what I found out, I've given this factoid before. When it scoops and swallows, the bottom of its gullet there, its beak, is perforated. So the water drains through while the fish stays in. Is that a 
What an example of God's creatures. You know what I mean? To perforate your your lower jaw. So you're not spitting out salt so water. So you're not spitting out salt water. <laughs> so you think with, God was up there. Fish. Yeah, I think God was I up there. I think God was up there designing the pelican was like, give it some slits. Yes. <laughs> right there in the beak. Watch this. No one will believe it. <laughs> it's like a drain. I know. You're welcome. <laughs> and that mm -hmm. is a, what ingenuity. Yeah. That is perfect ingenuity. The, one more animal story. A woman from England was shot. We've had a, a similar story on our air. Uh, and you'll know it when you hear it. A woman from England was stunned. Her cat, Ted, had passed away. She was on vacation in Turkey. And she had an outdoor cat named Ted. And when she came home, she found him in the backyard and did not know how he had died. But he had something had gotten him. And she was so upset by it, of course. But she went to her vet. She had the cat cremated. She got the little paw, you know, and everything. Uh, it took like... Three, four, three days or so after she got back, she got it done. Uh, and after all of that, after she went through it, she was sitting in her living room and this happened. So it's been a roller coaster of emotions on holiday and we're told that our cat has passed away. And four days later, we find out that he's actually alive and walked through the cat flap. He walked through the cat flap after they had cremated. So they, Ted's alive. They cremated the wrong cat. This cat in their backyard and their neighbor had said, we think Ted's dead. When she came home, she found him. They had him cremated. It turned out it wasn't her cat. It was it was a cat that looked almost exactly like Ted. So they don't mm. know where that cat came from. You know that that was. Uh, but he she, was dead. He, yeah. there was a there, there was, was a, a dead, dead cat. cat. So Ted is not reanimated. But Ted, no. Well, you also or is he? You all have seen pet cemetery. Seen pet cemetery. Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> don't get me, don't get me started on that. My God, Whew, that book scared. That's Kathy Bates. That's mm -hmm. where I first saw Kathy Bates. She's in that. No, I'm sorry. She's in Misery. Yeah. I'm sorry. She's in totally Misery. Different. Oh, yeah. That's the first time I saw Kathy Bates. Also alarming. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. But we heard that story with our comedian, uh, two guys named Chris Comedy All-Star, uh, James Sibley. Oh, Sibley. Almost the same thing happened. I'm talking to my wife on the cell phone, and I'm fixing to turn on to our street, and I tell her that. I say, I'm fixing to turn on our street right now and she says well i got the kids in the car i'm about five minutes behind you and we'll be mm -hmm. there in a minute and as i turn onto our street there's our cat laying in the middle of the street just dead i mean oh, it's, i mean mm -hmm. it looks like steamrollers have been running over it all day long oh no and in my mind i think well it'd be a lot better if my family thought the cat just ran away than if the cat was dead right. so i got five minutes before mm -hmm. they get here i jump out of my car and i grab a tire iron and this nasty cat carcass and go oh. run out in the woods to bury it. do you have any idea how hard it is to bury a cat with a tire iron <laughs> I mean, you're basically just chipping up the ground and digging. And, and I mean, I find, I get this leg, get in there, just, you know, I finally get it covered up and get, I'm dirty and nasty, walk in my house just in the nick of time. There's my cat sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I had buried somebody else's cat. I was just waiting for a, for a reward to come out right. for the other cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll give a find I think it. he's right down there by that pine tree. <laughs> yeah, I don't that, know how I'm That's doing. James Sibley. Who buried somebody else's cat with a tire iron. That would be very difficult. I've buried a few animals, too. And in the cold ground, it's not easy at all. <laughs>